welcome to For the Record. On this program, we talk about events and issues of local interest. Now that we're into 1989, Sudbury is going to be celebrating its 350th anniversary. With me today are Bill Adelson and Virginia Kirshner. They have been working on an original play called Town Meeting Tonight. Pretty soon they'll be casting for that play. Bill, as the person who has written most of this play, do you want to give us an idea of the kinds of things that are highlighted in it? Yes, be glad to. Uh, this started over a year ago. Uh, Virginia Kirshner and I are both on the board of the Sudbury Community Arts mm -hmm. Center, and we, knowing of the 350th coming up, thought wouldn't it be exciting to do something relevant to that occasion? And we decided one of the things we might do was write a play that told a little bit about the history of the town, because most of the people who live here now are relative newcomers. Uh, we were surprised as we looked into it more and more to find that some of the people who live here now are the descendants of people who came here 350 years ago. Yeah. And that mixture was very exciting to us. Uh, Sudbury is a well-documented town, fortunately. Uh, there are a lot of good books that we found that list the history from the early settlement through the French and Indian Wars, through the uh, early colonial period, through the revolutionary period, uh, through the inflation that followed the revolution, uh, through the 19th century with uh, industrialization and uh, transportation having had a big impact on this area. Uh, Sudbury has had many colorful characters in the course of uh, those years. They haven't all been in early history either. No, they, some, of them, some of them are right there in modern history. And in looking this over, we could see right away this was a Herculean task. Uh, one of the things that has been a constant from the time Sudbury was founded until the present time, and in, incidentally in which all Sudburyans have an opportunity to participate, is the institution of town meeting. Mm -hmm. And so we decided early on to use town meeting as a vehicle for going back into Sudbury mm -hmm. history and in telling some of the interesting episodes of Sudbury's history uh, through the issues that came before town meeting and some of the discussions that surrounded those issues and some of the events that precipitated those issues. So some of this is going to be done through the actual characters of the town. Some That's of right. Will be done with the issues surrounding the town meeting, but it sounds like some of it's going to be really focused on the way people lived and the way they dealt with those issues. Yes, and one of the things that interested us a lot was the fact that some of the issues that confronted mm -hmm. uh, Peter Noyes and uh, Edmund Brown and Brian Pendleton when they had the first town meeting are the very issues <laughs> we argue about today. And uh, some of our solutions are no better than theirs. In fact, some are a lot worse than theirs. Uh, they had to determine a fair division of land. They had to determine uh, maintenance of services for the community. They had to determine uh, how to take care of those who were poor or who didn't have sufficient funds. They had to determine what were fair prices or rates for services. Uh, they didn't have municipal employees. Uh, but even early on, they had to have people fill certain roles. And so they decided early on that they would do it in a democratic way, which was a, a major decision. It's, it's shaped the character of our country and of our town since that time, uh, because instead of having uh, people gain a role by appointment and then pass it on through the family, as was mm -hmm, the sure. practice yeah. often then, they decided that roles would be assigned by the group and rotated year after year, so different people would hold different roles. And in fact, uh, in the first 30 years of uh, Sudbury's life, uh, more than 50% of the adult males, and I have to say the women didn't take much <laughs> part at that time, had held some public office, which was a very high percentage. Well, women probably didn't take part in public office, but I'm sure they were. I'm doing sure a lot they of were pretty important, system. right? Uh, we now, at one time, only property owners could vote or hold office. That's Isn't right. That true? So, that's right. But that would include almost everybody in Sudbury. Uh, a great uh, many of the yeah. the first settling families were all property mm -hmm. owners. No one came here 
just as a, an indentured servant. Later mm -hmm. on, they did have servants and they did have people who came just as uh, day workers or journeymen. Uh, they each had a land allocation and the land allocation was done according to uh, family size and family needs. You got so many acres per adult and so many acres mm -hmm. per child and so many additional acres per cow or per horse because you needed that for food. Mm -hmm. In order to uh, sustain yourself in the wilderness, so to speak. That's right. Now, among the things I know you're talking about, too, are the help that the early settlers got from the Indians in this area. And uh, we weren't always too ethical about our return help, were we, with them? We found the history of the relationship between the early colonists and the Indians one of mm -hmm. the most interesting, but also one of the saddest parts mm -hmm. of Sudbury's history. Uh, there were good things that happened. They, uh, many of the Indians in this area uh, did accept Christianity and did deal with the settlers in a friendly manner, in fact shared their food with them and helped sustain them in times of need. Uh, there also was ill will caused by some of the mistreatment that the Indians underwent. Uh, there were atrocities committed by both the Indians and the settlers. And finally, mm -hmm. this uh, exploded in the King Philip War, uh, in which Sudbury featured very prominently. The uh, King Philip War was the largest of the Indian Wars. Mm -hmm. It was sure. the effort by the Indians to drive the settlers out of the New World, mm -hmm. uh, and it was stopped in Sudbury. Now, some of the things that you're going to be doing is casting based on some of these characters That's that right. you're talking about. And as I understand it, Virginia, you're going to be one of the people who's going to be overseeing the auditions and the tryouts. Well, that's right. I'm going to be directing the play, mm -hmm. and that's part of the job of the director is to uh, help audition the people and see who is going to fit and what, how that's all going to go together. Uh, of course, we have to hope that most of the people can sing, so we have to do a musical audition too. For instance, Mary Jane, if you want to come down and try out, if you've been in lots of musicals, I don't know if you have, but if you're experienced, you'll probably bring a piece of music mm -hmm. and you would sing something that would display mm -hmm. the range of your voice. In fact, most people bring two pieces, one that's mm -hmm. kind of upbeat and one that's more like a ballad, but we don't expect that everybody that wants to be in this play is going to be experienced uh, mm -hmm. singers, but uh, we will have to have you sing Happy Birthday or something <laughs> like that so we can see just, you know, where you would fit in. Well, part of the charm of putting on our own play over here in Sudbury is having people who are not totally experienced. And exactly, and I hope it will, you know, mm -hmm. that we will represent the, the whole gamut, the whole spectrum of people in the community, for instance. We have a scene that tells about Babe Ruth and mm -hmm. some of the kids that he used to bring to his farm and, and teach them how to play baseball and have fun with them and so forth. So we need mm -hmm. kids that age. Mm -hmm. that then, age bracket you Well, the, whatever the Little League age is, I guess, uh -huh. uh, I don't 10, know, 10 to 12, to 12 something, something like yeah. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to need uh, probably two teams worth. Yeah. 18 or so of those kids. Now, but they will have to sing, mm -hmm. too. I don't think it will be difficult, but, you know, they will yeah. sing the at song. Least you, <laughs> at least you want something to carry it, too. Loud. <laughs> <laughs> then mm -hmm. uh, we'll probably, we have another age group, uh, the boys that went to Henry Ford's school. Mm -hmm. Sure, he, he had quite an impact on Sudbury. He's yes, he did in many yes. ways. The Wayside Inn School was one of Sudbury's institutions. Yes, yeah, the Wayside Inn School. So we have a, we have a, a number that mm -hmm. deals with those boys. Now they would be a little bit older, would they? Yeah, they would be more like high school age mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. And they were yeah. taught a trade. And mm -hmm. I understand that some of the boys that attended that school sometimes passed through uh -huh. Sudbury and make themselves yeah. known and uh, some reminisce. Some of them live here in Sudbury. Some of them is that right? Do they? Yeah, some of them hold very responsible positions. In fact, we were fortunate uh -huh. enough to be able to interview two of them to get material about this. Uh, we had a wonderful time and a lot of good help collecting data mm -hmm. on Sudbury. We had your help, of course. Uh, we had Laura Scott's help. She's the town historian. Uh -huh. We had help from Ray Clark. We had help. Mm -hmm. Uh, from John Powers, and we had mm -hmm. uh, a lot of peop older people in town who 
were good enough to tell us uh, their memories of things in the past 75, 80 years. Uh, this provided a lot of wonderful individual stories, only a small number of which can be reflected in this. One of the difficult things was narrowing down all these wonderful, wonderful stories and the very interesting people to make a fairly compact play. Well, Sudbury has a reputation for being independent. Yes. Uh, any of us who have attended some of our <laughs> April 19 events can testify to That's uh, true. Even the Concord police now watch very carefully when our Sudbury Minute <laughs> company comes into town. To, and uh, no matter how often they try to tell them not to shoot off their muskets, it doesn't seem to be very successful. Well, they're spirited. But, uh, spir well, I think, I don't <laughs> obviously, spirited. the play couldn't be complete without Minutemen, mm -hmm. and we will have uh, a Minute Company. Perhaps some of the real Minute Company will be part of it, and mm -hmm. perhaps there'll be actors who will be coached by people in the Minute Company. But that, that covers the revolutionary period, and mm -hmm. uh, they were very important in that era. So that means you'll be looking, uh, Virginia, for men then of a particular Oh, yes. Well, you see, too. yeah, that's, I think the, actually the largest number of, of people in the play will be mature mm -hmm. men because as we know, most of written history deals with men. So we need, from Peter Noyes and Brian Pendleton and Edmund Brown, mm -hmm. we need uh, all the town meeting members were men. So yes, you yes. see, so we, you we need yes, so quite a few. And I say probably uh, two thirds at least should be able to sing a bit. Okay. Something. Now, I hear you saying they're going to be predominantly men, so that tells me that you're yeah. looking for women also, though. It's, yes, there yes. will be women. We're going to every we're finding every opportunity we can to put mm -hmm. uh, women into it, because you and I know behind every man <laughs> there is a good woman setting him up for success. <laughs> well, haven't they said that what every successful woman executive needs now is a wife to take care of? <laughs> All the things wives took care of. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Than, uh, yeah. yeah, we have one singing role. Uh, uh -huh. that calls for a fairly uh, young woman. Mm -hmm. And there we, we will put women in it wherever we can. Um, there's some big choral numbers that will have both mm -hmm. men and women in them. Of course, our current town meeting is rather equally divided between men and women. And uh, the introductory mm -hmm. number of the song, which we'll uh, be happy to play a little bit of for you, mm -hmm. uh, yes. called Town Meeting Tonight, because it's our lead song. Uh, has women and men singing various parts. Now the music in this play is also original, isn't it? It's all original. It was written by three people, uh, Steve Espinola, mm -hmm. Ken Getz, and uh, Mark Torrey. Uh, and we're having uh, it arranged for orchestra. Uh, we have a fine musical director who's had a lot of experience with uh, uh, various theatricals, and uh, we hope to have a full-scale production. Now, these three young men, Lincoln Sudbury graduates, did they go to school over here? Steve Espinola and Ken Getz both went to Lincoln Sudbury, uh -huh. and they're now grown up and gone. And Mark Torrey was a Sudbury neighbor in Marlboro. Uh -huh. okay. so they're really, all local people. Yeah, I was going to say, almost all the work on this now has been done by our own local people. And I'm, I'm really proud of that. You know, when Concord celebrated its 350th, they did a production. I mean, they had the parade and all those other things, mm -hmm. but they did a production of Our Town, Thornton Wilder's Our Town, uh -huh. which I directed. But I think, um, I really think for us to write our own play and to mm -hmm. produce our own play is, uh, is very special. Well, we have such a wealth of information and growth that went on in Sudbury. As you said, not only in the early years, but even coming on through with the industries coming in, uh, Henry Ford had quite an impact over here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Presumably, yeah, you're going to be looking for someone to play his part. Well, he doesn't actually appear, his, <laughs> but one of his cars will appear. Is that right? Yes. Uh, is yes. It an old Ford? We a have Ford. access to an old Ford, which we oh, hope to have super. come on, representing Henry <laughs> Ford coming to visit. Now I'm almost sorry we've told people what a wonderful surprise that would have been. Well, been that's all right. <laughs> Uh, it turns out, you see, that the uh, Model A club for this part of Massachusetts meets in Sudbury. Oh, how and they were mm -hmm. having a, I don't know what they call them, but anyway, a caravan of cars, and they, mm -hmm. they parked them down at the Wayside um, Country Store. Yes. And that's how I found out about them. And mm -hmm. the car we're going to use belongs to a Sudbury man. 
So, so we're keeping it all local. Keeping it as local yes. as possible. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to ask you the logistics of trying to get this car on the stage. <laughs> well, we did it before when we did Tea House of an August Moon. We uh, had a Jeep on stage, so I know just how we're going to do it. So give me a little thumbnail again of the characters that you are looking for. I know you're going to have about how many men? Is it going to be well, 20 or? The play, yeah, 20 the play is going to probably. actually start out with a modern town meeting setting. Have mm -hmm. a moderator and the select people and the mm -hmm. finance committee, all those people we uh, see before us at town meeting. Did we that have a we finance uh, committee in those days? Well, we had the equivalent of it, uh -huh. and so we'll need all those people, and then we'll need people from each of the various periods, uh, mm -hmm. showing the gradual increase in the size of town and complexity of town government. And then we have some incidents that are not actually town meeting, but that we could call town color or town characters, mm -hmm. uh, such as the Babe Ruth or the Henry mm -hmm. Ford. Uh, we have a wonderful segment about the Underground Railroad that passed mm -hmm. through Sudbury, and a terrific song with that called Freedom Train, which will play you a part of. Yes, I'd uh, really be interested to hear about that, because not too many people know that mm -hmm. it's one of our houses here. Was it on Concord Road? Right on Concord yep. Road. Uh -huh. That uh, was part of the Underground right. Railroad. So. Got be a lot of fascinating. A man named Israel Howe Brown was the uh, farmer who managed to keep things running and uh -huh. bring a lot of people up north uh -huh. so they could reach Canada. Now, we have had a Civil War contingent that's been with us in the Memorial Day parade. Are they going to have any part to play in your uh, play? or have you? Well, one of the big features of the play, of course, are going to be photographs, and uh -huh. Bill was able to uh, to take a lot of pictures of that group, isn't that yeah, right? Yeah, we should mention that there will be photo projections going on as part of this play. This will be the backdrop? Well, we well, won't tell you exactly how it'll be, but it'll be there. And one of the things we found to our delight, you know, for the last year we've been looking for good opportunities, there is a group in town who own five civil, genuine mm -hmm. Civil War field pieces, which they mm -hmm. fire in competition all over the country. Yes. Uh, they actually are accurate shots, and they care for these uh, very uh, fastidiously, and they were nice mm -hmm. enough to bring two of them out and mm -hmm. prime load and fire them for us, and we got some wonderful pictures mm -hmm. of Civil War artillery in action which will not be used on the stage. We're not going to have them fire into the audience because they're loud and they have a considerable mm -hmm. smell of gunpowder, but mm -hmm. they will be in the pictures, as will many other things that we managed to photograph. I was going to say, now, you've really been able to come up with a lot of these touches, I think, that are going to make the play come alive uh, for people. And I do remember that, uh, wasn't it Peter Albee who had a, an original Civil War uniform? Did, uh, yes. did they wear those by any time? Yes, they wore uniform? Civil War oh, they were uniforms. All in uniform. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So their yes. photographs look very authentic. One of the things that I know happened to me as I researched this, and I think all of us working on it, mm -hmm. uh, we increased our respect for the town as far and the regard for the town's historical traditions. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the uh, people we had gotten used to knowing in town we sort of realized how important their forebears had yes. been in yes. forming the town and creating its institution and creating its environment. Mm -hmm. And the town has changed so much in the last mm -hmm. generation with so many new people coming in that many of them, I don't think, appreciate what a historically rich area they're in. I think they yes. appreciate that it, the homes are beautiful, the mm -hmm. schools are good, and there are a lot of mm -hmm. other assets. But historically, this is a wonderful area. And we hope to be able to convey some of that uh, mm -hmm. to people in town, as well as uh, give recognition to some of the people whose families have built the town. Well, it's true. It's easy to take for granted what we already have, and we forget mm -hmm. sometimes that the first people who came here cleared the land mm -hmm. and went through all of the grief and uh, issues that you mentioned before. Uh, of Sudbury back. was a big area at that time. You know, it was the mother town for Wayland. Mm -hmm. And Framingham and Natick, Natick Stowe, Acton, yeah. Stowe, Marlborough, yeah. Grafton, Sorry. Worcester, they were all outshoots of Sudbury. Yes, yeah. yeah. Sudbury was the western tier of the original mm -hmm. settlements. There was the coast settlements and Watertown, which was one step further yes, inland, yeah. upriver, mm -hmm. and Sudbury was the first across land leap mm -hmm. further into mm -hmm. the wilderness. Then after that, there were some big leaps that went all the way down to Hartford and uh, 
Connecticut Valley. But Sudbury was right in there in the center of transit. And, uh, oh, sure, I see. Of course, Wayland was part of Sudbury. Yes, mm -hmm. because up until of the, 1780. Uh, the dominance of the church, I guess, is what really made mm -hmm. it split because it was difficult to cross the river in the wintertime. Oh, that's it. Most of Wayland, right. the very uh, early parish. history is really the story mm -hmm. of Wayland. What's Wayland yes. now? Because that's it was right. the eastern yeah. bank of the river yeah. where they were And it was east located. Uh -huh. Right, we addressed mm -hmm. that, and we have... Uh, interesting mm -hmm. segment about the division of Sudbury and Wayland. Mm -hmm. The parting, shall we say, which was an amicable parting. Now we also had our 300th anniversary in 1939. Is there uh, any of that going to come into play? Yeah, we have a nice uh, scene. At that yeah. time, uh, Governor Leverett Saltonstall made a speech mm -hmm. to the Grange. And we have some of that original speech, and there were parades and all kinds of things. and. I think we're going to have a, um, it's a piece of scenery that's going to indicate what it was like at Some that time. The, uh, yeah, the 19th the, uh, because they had yeah. people dressed as Indians and people dressed as Puritans and uh, we're going to, uh -huh. we're not going to do the same kind of thing, but we're going to use a, a, a scenic element to show. Now, that. are you looking for pictures from some of the families that have been here earlier? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, we would encourage anyone who has good pictures as far back mm -hmm. as, as they can go uh, of uh, what Sudbury buildings looked like and families mm -hmm. and family events and gatherings, town gatherings, celebrations. Mm -hmm. uh, photographs are, have been mm -hmm. taken since the 1850s. Uh -huh. So there are even perhaps uh -huh. some Civil War photographs. We have mm -hmm. seen a few. Some of them are not good enough quality to be enlarged and projected. Mm -hmm. But we hope there are people in town who have some. If they will contact me or Laura Scott or Laura Askenazi, who's working mm -hmm. on our photographic archives, we will be very happy to, mm -hmm. to use them. Would you like to give them a phone number, Bill, for them yes, to call you? Yes, they can call me at 443-2578. All right, and these pictures now would be on loan, of course. Obviously. We would, we would copy them and return the originals mm -hmm. because they're obviously precious to the families that have them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you would make sure that you, you do have some control over them Absolutely. so that they can get back. Because we would like to encourage people to come forward. They will be them. copied right here in Sudbury. They will never leave the town. <laughs> they will not be mailed or sent off, uh -huh. and they will be returned. You know, among the uh, things that have occurred to me while we're talking about the photographs is the uh, little one-room one schoolhouse that we had uh, up now by the Mary Martha Chapel. Uh, have we brought that into the play at all? Is that uh, one of the things we talk about? Some no. graduates from there? No, we don't. I don't think we have no, any we don't have reference to that. that. Even uh -huh. with the Henry Ford sequence, I, I don't believe that comes in. But there yeah. are there are people in Sudbury so, yes, who went to that school. Yeah, the Dave Bentley comes to mind as yes. one of the people uh, yes. I know that is yes. a graduate of, uh, of our women's school. And I now, think Tom Winship, the former editor yes, of the Globe, right. is one. Right. That's there's a situation that. where if someone has a good picture of mm -hmm. a graduating class or the total population of that school posing for their picture out in mm -hmm. front of that school, that would be a wonderful picture. And although there isn't a mm -hmm. sequence specifically about that school, one could project that picture mm -hmm. and people would recognize what it is. As you said, the problem really is you have such a, a number of riches to right. deal with in Sudbury mm -hmm. uh, in putting together this play that the problem is not getting enough things to put in the play. The problem right. is what do you highlight? Uh, That's right where we are now. I would yes. say we're still thinking whether this thing should be featured over that thing. and. Actually, we don't want it to make it yes. too long and yes, too boring. Yeah. We're not going to add more text. <laughs> We're not going to add more text, but photographically we can mm -hmm. enrich it greatly if we have pictures of things mm -hmm. that people recognize and appreciate. You had mentioned the tricentenary, the mm -hmm. uh, 1939 uh, yes. celebration. One of the differences between that and the 350th is that the mm -hmm. town in 1939 was about the same population size that it was at the time of the revolution. Yes. And one of the things that they had to say about Sudbury was its remarkable stability. Times change, cities grow, mm -hmm. industrialization has swept the state. Sudbury had remained a rural community uh, mm -hmm. with many of its physical features very much the same for 150 years. 
And then, of course, in the 50 years since that time, we've experienced a tremendous growth mm -hmm. of suburban Sudbury, the sure. business growth along Route 20, and we have a song that addresses that, and the uh, many, many schools that were built, and the many, many more people who moved in, and the great diversity of uh, residents now as compared with the relative homogeneity up until 1939. Well, I guess a lot of this was the post-World War II yes. building boom and baby boom. Right. Well, really, that accounted for this westward expansion uh, from the uh, core city. Yeah, interesting enough, the building of Route 128 was a big factor. Yes. Because yeah, it because made Sudbury a reasonable place to live to get to work in almost mm -hmm. any part of the western suburbs. Well, I've often felt that there were two towns when I first came over here. One were the early settlers' de descendants, as you had mentioned, and the others were the so-called newcomers like myself and your high-tech engineers on Route 128, which was the first building boom, I think, mm -hmm. in the early 50s that came in. And now we have our third tier of people uh, That's true. coming in. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's been interesting to see how the different groups have worked sometimes together, sometimes not together, and town meeting has been the forum and the floor. Yeah, it's reflected those varying points of view. But I think if, if we have to say one thing about our play, it's the more things change, the more they stay the same. The same values, the same respect for the land, uh, the respect for people as individuals. I don't think that changes. And That's then, right. It was the presence of water, the river that brought yes. people here. It's, every, it's the protection of that water now that's a major issue for town meetings, uh -huh. but it always has been. Uh, you go sure. back to earlier town meetings and water rights and water distribution and protection of pure water was, has always been an issue here in Sudbury. Well, Virginia, do you want to give me a recap now of the kinds of people that you're going to be looking for for the tryouts? where they should go, and how they can come best prepared. All right. We can uh, be very happy to welcome anybody who would like to be in the play uh, on the evenings of January 17th and 18th at 7 o'clock in the town hall. Now, the play is going to be produced in the regional uh, auditorium, but mm -hmm. the tryouts are going to be in the town hall. Okay, and they'll be in the upper town hall. In the upper town hall, and they will be divided up into reading auditions, musical auditions, and since there will be some ever so slight choreography, uh, there will be some kind of requirement, to, at least to see how well people can move. We're not looking for the rockets, but uh, people will, will be, uh, with these songs, you, you know, you have to have some movement too. So uh, we are happy to have youngsters, as I told you, the, the mm -hmm. 10 to 12 group, and the uh, high school age kids, uh, young people in their mm -hmm. 20s and people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever. <laughs> there are some interesting mm -hmm. cameo roles mm -hmm. where a person will just do that one part and not be required mm -hmm. to do the other okay. thing. Now, I know there's a lot of concern mm -hmm. about how much rehearsal time is required, and I just want to say, mm -hmm. Anything that's good, you have to put some time into. So we will be holding rehearsals probably four nights a week, one of which would be mm -hmm. Sunday, either Sunday afternoon or evening, and then mm -hmm. Tuesday and Wednesday that would be the musical rehearsals, and probably Thursday will be for the dialogue rehearsals, something like mm -hmm. that. So we can accommodate people who just want to do a little bit, and mm -hmm. we can accommodate people who want to do a lot. Men and women, but I have to say that we will be looking very hard for some men. We need uh, people from the Minute Company who can uh, help us teach mm -hmm. non-military yeah. types to march and drill because we have, a, we have a song that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. so for it's called We Want Liberty by George. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it is it's a marching tune. It's perfect uh -huh. for, uh, for uh, uh -huh. doing the arms and the manual of arms or whatever they call those sure. routines yeah. that yeah. they do. It would be the manual of arms. Yeah. And um, I just want everybody to have a wonderful time doing this. You know, it, it should be fun. We'll try to be as respectful as we can of people's time and be organized so that we don't have people sitting around for a long time. But when we develop a schedule, it'll be very important for people mm -hmm. to adhere to that. Now, are you the person they should call? Uh, I would be very glad if anybody would call. Would uh -huh. you like to give them your phone number? Okay, my phone contact? number is 
2866. And there's someone there to answer it most of the time. All right, so if anyone has any question about the time, the day, mm -hmm. the kinds of people you're looking yep. for, they could they just can call. Reach you. Now, we also, no play gets on without the workers, the production yes. workers, <laughs> the backstage workers. So I'd like to mention that. I'm very fortunate that my sister, Pat Lockery, is going to be my producer, mm -hmm. and so she and I work very well together, and people who would like to work on the show, like stage managers, mm -hmm. uh, scenery builders, there's not going to be a lot of that, but there'll be, we do need people to help, they can call her. Okay. And her number is 443-6804, Pat Lockery. So any of our aspiring actors, mm -hmm. actresses, singers, some good singers, some not so good singers, but willing. willing, but willing and in good voice, yeah. would be welcome to come. Yeah, that would be just terrific. And the date of the play that uh, that's going to it's be going presented? It's going to be two performances, March 18th, that's a Saturday night, and March 19th, that's a Sunday afternoon. So that uh, even kids who aren't going to stay up late, late, can still come and see it. <laughs> All right. I hope that you get a lot of response. I know that it's going to be a very exciting program to work with. And everything you've heard today is for the record. <laughs> job to do. Everyone fulfills their role and keeps this town running true. John, dear John, you've been so long gone. I've worried and I wished I scarce could on. The seasons have changed and the children have grown. I've needed your strength. I'm so glad that you're Ride, but this train's not going back. 